unwilling to believe their own lying eyes. Now, the Trump agenda is actually succeeding. Mueller's investigation is crumbling, and the Democrats' chances of a so-called blue wave in the midterms, well, that's getting more and more remote with each passing day. Now, in moments, we're going to highlight the unhinged rhetoric coming from one of the de facto leaders of the Democratic Party, and that would be Congresswoman Maxine Waters, plus another Hannity history lesson tonight you don't want to miss, revealing the blatant double standard surrounding the Democrats' use of women as political pawns. And also tonight, a new investigation casting serious doubt about the legitimacy of Robert Mueller's witch hunt, the case against George Papadopoulos. Oh, guess what? That was likely tainted by political bias. And according to a report, Robert Mueller, he's now focusing on his witch hunt on Russia collusion. Wasn't that supposed to be the point the entire time? Now, this is a runaway fishing expedition. Get ready. A lot to cover in tonight's jam-packed breaking news opening monologue. America's left call President Trump, let's see, racist, xenophobic, Islamophobic, and every other name in the book. But today, the United States Supreme Court upheld President Donald Trump's executive order temporarily restricting travel from seven countries with high security risks. And here's how the president reacted earlier today. Take a look. Today's Supreme Court ruling uh, just coming out, a tremendous success, a tremendous victory for the American people and for our Constitution. This is a great victory for our Constitution. We have to be tough and we have to be safe and we have to be secure. At a minimum, we have to make sure that we vet people coming into the country. We know who's coming in. We know where they're coming from. We just have to know who's coming here. The ruling shows that all of the attacks from the media and the Democrat politicians are wrong, and they turned out to be very wrong. Well, as you might imagine, Democrats, they're not taking this so well. Now, usually they rely on the court system and activist judges on the West Coast to push their agenda. But after this judicial victory for the Trump administration, they are lashing out angrily and, of course, claiming racism. As Congressman Keith Ellison, he wrote that this decision, quote, gives legitimacy to discrimination and Islamophobia. And a Hawaiian senator actually told NBC News, quote, who is going to be next? Is the president going to issue an executive order again? Against Mexicans? Okay, these people, as I said, are unhinged. Now, the Democrats claim of racism, bigotry, it should not surprise you. It's like clockwork. The left is right back to their old playbook, their favorite tactic, identity politics. Now, last night, we showed you the long and storied history of how Democrats, they use race every two to four years to vilify Republicans, divide America, and win votes. Republicans are racist. They are sexist. They're misogynistic. They're xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic. They want dirty air and water. They want to kill children, and they want your grandmother thrown over the cliff every two to four years. It's really predictable. And we have yet another Hannity history lesson tonight to bring you. This time it involves yet another favorite tactic of the Democratic Party and gender identity politics. Now let's start this lesson way back in 2012. Then presidential candidate, remember Mitt Romney? By the way, he probably will get the nomination out in Utah tonight, touting his strong record of hiring women. He had a binder that highlighted resumes of women applicants that he wanted to hire. Remember this. We took a concerted effort to go out and find women who had backgrounds that could be qualified to become members of our cabinet. I went to a number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And they brought us whole binders full of, uh, of women. I was proud of the fact that after I staffed my cabinet and my senior staff, that the University of New York uh, in Albany did a survey of all 50 states and concluded that mine had more women in senior leadership positions than any other state in America. I remember following those remarks, Mitt Romney brutalized by the mainstream media and many Democrats, many insinuating that Mitt Romney was actually sexist because of those remarks. In other words, that he had resumes of women that he wanted to hire because he wanted to advance their life, their career, their opportunities, and be fair. Watch this. Mitt Romney, on a point-blank question the other night in the debate, refused to answer whether he believes in equal pay for equal work. He, he referred to women as being binders and resumes. I would just like to point out that we yes. also have our binders every, every morning. It's going to be the joke that keeps on giving. 
it was very unfortunate for Governor Romney because it sort of raises this question, um, can he relate to working women? You know, um, it made it sound almost like working women are some mail order product you can uh, order out of colored binders. Mitt Romney just completely doesn't have any leg to stand on when it comes to women in the economy. I think Binder is trivializing things, uh, might be indicative of, of the way Mitt Romney trivializes things. I've got to tell you, we don't have to collect a bunch of binders to find qualified, talented, driven young women. You notice they're the same hacks that attack Donald Trump today? There's a little consistency there in their stupidity and their groupthink. Tucker says that. Now, you think that's bad? Oh, there's so much more. Remember in 2012, House Democrats said any criticism of Susan Rice, any, is sexist and racist. And you might remember, Rice lied over and over and over and over and over again on national TV about Benghazi being out and out of a, a protest over a YouTube video, a talking point lie. Remember in 2008, John McCain, he was also accused of misogyny again and again, despite, oh, tapping Sarah Palin to be his running mate. Now, we could go on and on. But today we have now more proof that these claims of sexism, misogyny, are merely a political tactic. We see it every two and four years. The left claims to have a monopoly of compassion for women. Take a look at how they're treating many women that are now in positions of power in the Trump administration. Boy, their tune has changed. Take a look. I was asked to leave a restaurant this weekend where I attempted to have dinner with my family. My husband and I politely left and went home. I was asked to leave because I work for President Trump. We are allowed to disagree, but we should be able to do so freely and without fear of harm. And this goes for all people, regardless of politics. Three huge guys came up and started probably an inch from my face, screaming at me every word in the book, cursing as loud as they could. Uh, so then a trooper, my trooper came up and my boyfriend and I got our tickets, were headed in, and then they ran in and circled me where I could not get in the theater. They stopped me. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen is in a Mexican restaurant of all places. Doesn't sound like they're treating women very well. Angry protesters showing up at the house of Secretary Nielsen and now the home of Press Secretary Sarah Sanders now has to be under the protection of the Secret Service and her children have been threatened. So you got Pam Bondi, you got Sarah Sanders, you got Secretary Nielsen on top of Ivanka, Melania, O, and little children, a 12 year old kid and a four year old granddaughter of the president. This is called an abusive double standard. Democrats say they're all for women's rights, unless, of course, they disagree with the women politically. Then all bets are off. Remember years ago, it was the left that warned us the Tea Party was an angry mob of people who were putting Americans at risk. Remember this? Take a look. The discourse in America, the discourse in Congress in particular, to answer your question very specifically, has really changed. And I'll tell you, I, I hesitate to place blame, but I have noticed it take a, a very precipitous turn to, with, towards, towards edginess and a lack of civility with the growth of the Tea Party movement. Those of you who are watch, watching certain uh, news channels, that, you know, on which I'm not very popular, and you see folks waving tea bags around. Their hair is on fire because they see the extraction. Their response to their hair being on fire is tear the place down, get rid of the government, burn the place. The Tea Partier burns themselves in the town square and then tries to burn the whole town down because they're so pissed off. Gratifies their anger. Yeehaw, you're mad. You just killed everybody. And who's the angry mob now? As it turns out, the rhetoric, the tactics utilized by the left is so vile, so vicious, so hypocritical, so aggressive. You know what? We're in an environment now, we're not careful. Seriously, people are going to get hurt or killed. Now, of course, today, the ringleader of all the anti-Trump hatred is none other than Congresswoman Maxine Waters, the head of the Democratic Party. Did you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station? You get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere.
the Senate Intel Committee, with the House Intel Committee. Reclaiming my time. Reclaiming my time. Judiciary. Reclaiming my time. Okay. Reclaiming my time. Mr. Secretary, the time belongs to the gentle lady from California. Perhaps, Mr. Chairman, I don't understand the rules because I thought I was allowed to answer questions. Reclaiming my time. Would you please explain the rules and do not take that away from my time. With this kind of inspiration, I will go and take Trump out tonight. Unveil the criminal activity, the unconstitutional activity of this president and his family. So I have dubbed them the uh, criminal clan a long time ago. And I will fight every day until he is impeached. Impeach 45. This is a bunch of scumbags. That's what they are. Those are very We're strong all words. Organized Congress. around making money. The fact that uh, he is wrapping his arms around Putin, uh, while uh, Putin is continuing uh, to advance uh, into Korea. Scumbags. Take Trump out. I've been telling you, there are four agenda items of the Democratic Party. One, to keep telling Maxine Waters, Maxine, shh, just don't say it. Agenda item number one, they want to impeach the president. Number two, they want open borders. Number three, they want Obamacare. And they want the crumbs back. In other words, they want your tax cut back, and they're very vocal about it. Here's your question the American people need to decide. Is this acceptable behavior and rhetoric from a member of Congress, a de facto leader of your Democratic Party? Nancy Pelosi, Elizabeth Warren, Hillary Clinton, it's okay for you to Trump allies, to be confronted, Pam Bondi, uh, Secretary Nielsen, Sarah Sanders, wherever they go, tell your friends, build the crowd, get in their face. Oh, that was Obama's words. Get in their face. Remember, we'll send Mr. Burgess out there to get Sean Hannity. He'll tear him up. Was that a threat? Should I have sued the president at the time? Now, just today, another Trump ally was confronted on the street by an angry mob of liberals. This time, the target was Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell and his wife, another woman, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chan. Now, watch this. He's so tough. Really? By the way, Secretary Chow, good job. I knew you stood strong there. No one's safe from the left's angry wrath. Maybe not even you. Now, as the midterm elections get closer and closer, yeah, the mainstream media, they're now ginning up their hatred against Donald Trump and everyday Trump supporters. The website, Grabian, put together this montage highlighting some of their blatant hatred for Trump voters. This is your corrupt media on display. Take a look. Cut to the chase. This is about racism. This is pure and simple racism. That's all this is. He's hoping that the people who support him will be ginned up and, 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 and running to the polls to make sure that brown people don't come into America. We can no longer say Trump's the bad guy. If you vote for Trump, you're the bad guy. Mm -hmm. If you vote for Trump, you are us. ripping children from parents' arms. If you vote for Trump, then you the voter, you, not Donald Trump, are standing at the bar border like Nazis going, you here, you here. If you hold down the woman while the rapist is raping her and you didn't rape her, are you a rapist? I mean, let's just really, let's, let's cut the BS and start speaking honestly. That's a very powerful and uncomfortable anecdote that you share. And people will think that you're comparing Trump voters to racists. I mean, to, to rapists. Yeah, and it's that, uncomfortable, isn't it? That, that is uncomfortable. Meathead, little Donnie, who on his own TV show gets like a point two rating, and Michael Moore, we're going to get lectured by them. Seriously? Meathead? All right, as I said before, the rhetoric coming from the left. Okay, it needs to cool down, because you know what? Something bad is going to happen. This is not going to end well if this keeps up. The hostility towards the president, his success, his allies, his supporters, it's all predictable. They now see the blue tidal wave receding, and that's what 
what scares them. Donald Trump's success is their failure. That means they want the country to fail or they can't get their power back. Now let's turn our attention to other breaking developments tonight surrounding Robert Mueller's runaway witch hunt. For months on this program, we have questioned the legitimacy of the investigation. We've been investigating the investigators and just why it was all started in the first place. We have a new report tonight from Real Clear Politics, much of what we have been saying and now corroborated yet again. According to Real Clear, quote, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, they formally opened its Trump investigation after Western intelligence access and Clinton affiliated political operatives repeatedly approached the Trump campaign and tried but failed to damage it through associations with Russia. A growing body of evidence now suggesting, in other words, the FBI's partisan witch hunt started again because Hillary Clinton's campaign, they pushed for it. That's exactly what we've been saying for months and there's more. Now we're learning that the guilty pleas extracted from Lieutenant General Michael Flynn and former Trump campaign aide George Papadopoulos were connected to two anti-Trump FBI employees who have been now singled out for investigation by the inspector general because of their rampant abusive bias in politics. And one of those lovebirds, FBI lovebird Peter Strzok, oh, he's going to testify before Congress tomorrow. He's hiding behind closed doors. Why are you letting him get away with that? Let the American people see it. We'll have a full report. We'll find out what happens anyway. Meanwhile, Sarah Carter reporting that for the first time, House Judiciary Committee passed a resolution demanding the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein turn over all requested documents regarding the FBI's handling of this Russia investigation or face impeachment or contempt. Sarah will have more in just a few minutes on this groundbreaking development. Finally tonight, we end with one more almost unbelievable revelation about the Mueller probe. According to a report, Bloomberg, Robert Mueller, he's actually now focusing on Trump-Russia collusion allegations. We are now 405 days into the Russia probe, and the breaking news today is Mueller is just now starting investigating Russia collusion, which isn't a crime. What has he been doing the past 404 days? Oh, that's right. This is an anti-Trump fishing expedition looking for something, anything to take the president down. And as you can see, the so-called investigation, it has been exposed. The witch hunt is crumbling before our eyes. The economy is thriving. And little rocket man is now sitting down at the table talking about the denuclearization of the entire Korean peninsula. Here now, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter. You see this book? It is now coming out in July. That is only, what, two weeks away. Brand new book, The Russia Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton and Frame Donald Trump, available pre-sales, Amazon.com and uh, Hannity.com. Fox News. All right, Sarah, let's start with the breaking news tonight and with the House Judiciary. And how is it the guy in the center of all of this, Peter Strzok, gets to be behind closed doors? And will he be under oath, which to me is a big question? Yeah, it's a huge question. And let me tell you something, Sean. Tomorrow when he gets behind those closed doors, he is going to be grilled. I've spoke to a number of lawmakers today that have said they're not going to let Peter Strzok just try to skate by. They're going to ask the tough questions. And believe me, there are a lot of tough questions that he needs to answer. Peter Strzok was in the middle of the Russia investigation, in the middle of the Hillary Clinton server investigation. He was the lead investigator. And he needs to do a lot of explaining. Um, tomorrow there are a number of lawmakers that are going to directly ask him what his text messages meant. What did he mean by saying they're going to stop the president, they're going to stop him? Uh, I know there's other questions they have with regard to McCabe and his activities because Deputy Director, former Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, was actively involved in a lot of this. And they want to know if he actually met with him, as he talked about with Lisa Page and the text messages. What was the insurance policy? Let's go to, uh, Greg, one of the important aspects of all of this and that is the IG determined Strzok had a willingness to take official action to impact Trump's electoral pro uh, prospects. That sounds to me like an attempt at a soft coup in America with sure. the power of the FBI and the lead investigator. Subverting the rule of law and undermining uh, a democratic uh, election. Um, one of the critical questions he'll be asked is, on June 6, 2016, you sat down at your computer with your mistress, Lisa Page, and two other people unidentified, so 
far, and you change the critical language of James Comey's statement that Hillary Clinton was grossly negligent, having committed a crime, to something that seemingly was then less than that. So this was written in early May. Good. This is June 6th. They don't June even 6th. interview her till July 2nd. So they're changing the standard. Right. From the legal standard to just a slightly it, less. It, it's a, a similar, almost identical term, but it's not in the statute. And thus, Comey felt he could exonerate Hillary Clinton with essentially a charade. And then struck flies to London the day after the Trump-Russia uh, collusion investigation begins. Who did he meet with? Christopher Steele? Did you talk about the dossier? Did you already have the dossier? Did, it, did he give it to you? And what about your use of confidential information? Informants. Did you assign them to investigate the Trump team before the investigation ever began? So there are yes, going to be a lot of questions. One. Unfinished business. Then, of course, right. oh, we're not going to let that happen. And then we have the insurance policy, as Sarah mentioned, and as you have talked about. Um, and he talks about his organization. Trump is, is about to win, and he says, I'm scared for our organization. This is important now. Yeah, this is a text from Paige to him. What did she mean by your organization. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by now I need to fix it and finish it? All of these things led the inspector general to conclude there was a willingness to influence the election. Sarah, here's the big and question. So I would think Jim Jordan tomorrow is the guy to watch. Who else? I think Jim Jordan is the guy to watch. I think Matt Gates is another guy to watch. There's going to be quite a few questions coming from both of them. And I think something that's very important, and Greg touched on it, how many informants did they have? I mean, this is a big question. How many people were actively involved, and did taxpayers actually pay for those uh, why informants? Why was Michael Caputo approached? Why was uh, a deal right. offered to uh, Roger Stone? This is in May before they ever even came anywhere near this supposed Trump-Russia collusion, right? And the FBI brought in a, a, a convicted convict from, from Russia to do this? Why? Who, who authorized that? Was it the Clintons? Sarah, last, last point. Yeah, hopefully we'll get those answers tomorrow, or at least some of them. And remember, if they don't, if they don't turn over those documents, Sean... Congress has other plans. Contempt or impeachment this is for Ron Rosenstein. Interesting. And by the way, I would say to Chairman Gowdy and Chairman, Chairman Goodlatte, release the transcripts. Release them. We deserve to see them. All right, when we come back, congrats on the book. Joe DeGeneva, Andy McCarthy, and breaking news that just crossed the AP, reporting Henry McMaster won the South Carolina GOP primary runoff. We'll tell you more. All right, joining us now with reaction to tonight's breaking news, our opening monologue. He is a former U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, Joe DeGeneva, Fox News contributor, Andrew McCarthy. And, of course, he writes for National Review, two of the smartest people I know. Uh, good to see you. So Strzok gets to go behind closed doors. He says he's going to talk, and I don't believe it. Well, he probably is going to talk, Sean, because he talked to Horowitz. So, you know, I think he sounds like he's one of these guys who thinks he can go into the room and kind of control the room. I and mean, Horowitz says that that when is he, really arrogant and stupid. Well, Horowitz said that he had very long, involved answers on every question he asked about, you know, why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? Uh, so he may just be one of these guys who thinks he can go into that environment and, and do okay. And he's got reasons to think that because in a courtroom where there's a judge, somebody can't get away with just giving their side of the story and then saying when you try to cross-examine them, oh, uh, national security reasons or uh, you know, like investigative integrity. A judge would tell them, no, 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 you told your side of the story, now they get to ask you about the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. In a congressional hearing, you can dodge that stuff. I mean, they get away with that all the time. I have some faith in a few of the congressmen there, Jordan, Gates, some of the people Sarah was talking about. Um, you know, you know one thing you said, Joe DeGeneva, that still sticks with me? Because so many of my family, my mom was a prison guard, my dad worked in family court probation, I had cousins that were on the NYPD, the two guys that were deity were both FBI guys, and you say bad cop, and sadly it's true. And he was the lead guy, interviewed Clinton, interviewed Flynn, began the Russia investigation, which I would argue renders it illegitimate from the get-go. This is the guy you're talking about. This is one of the guys, not the rank-and-file guys. 
Yeah. Well, as I said from the very beginning of this, James Comey was a dirty cop. And Mr. Strzok is dirtier. Uh, the bottom line is very simple. He's going to go in tomorrow and he's going to lie. He's going to give explanations that are untruthful. He says that when Lisa Page asked him, he's not in speaking about uh, President or uh, candidate Trump. He can't win, can he? We, we can't have him as president. And Strzok says, no, 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 we'll stop it. Now, he is claiming that there's an explanation for we'll stop it. I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> you know, you're two people that I don't think I'd want to mess with in a courtroom. Um, I kind of agree. But then there's the insurance policy. Then there's sure. the lonesome human being. Then there's, you know, beyond we'll stop it. Then there's the actions. Now it's real. This is real. And I'm, you know, some superior belief that he's doing it, you know, for noble causes. Yeah. But really, he's almost attempting a coup because wow. somebody was guilty of crimes. He pushes under the rug and then they go full force sledgehammer on the other candidate. You that know, to me is influencing an election. Let, 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 and let, let, let's just let's just be very clear about this. This is not a complicated case. The FBI at the senior levels in the Obama administration and the Department of Justice, Loretta Lynch and all her minions had two goals in mind. Very simple, very plain. Exonerate Hillary Clinton illegally and then if she lost the election to frame Donald Trump. That's it. It's it's in a nutshell, it's never changed over the last two years, and everything that we have learned from the text messages, the IG reports, etc., has proven conclusively that that is precisely what James Comey and Loretta Lynch and the Obama administration people wanted to do. And it was the most brazen plot in the history of U.S. law enforcement, and it won't make much difference unless we get all the facts out on the table. Andy, I agree. This, yeah. I, look, I, I think it's clear that these were two investigations that were going on at the same time. And whether you're a liberal or a conservative, Republican or Democrat, I don't know how you look at them and say that the same quality of justice was accorded to, to both. Isn't clear it, it wasn't. It, but, you know, equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws, our constitutional system here, Listen, it all started with Hillary. She committed felonies, the biggest, most obvious case of obstruction. They made every consideration, thread every needle, even though other people went to jail for far worse. And then you go to what they did to Donald Trump, what, what Joe's talking about. Right. Then how do you lie to a FISA judge, Andy? Not once, four times, unverified, uncorroborated, against the law, against FBI protocol, four times using bought and paid for political inf uh, you know, op research from an outsider, a foreign national. Sean, I think on one side of the coin with Hillary, it, it looks like they bent over backwards to not make the case in the face of mountainous mountain. evidence against her. And on the other side, where you don't have evidence of a crime, it seems that they scorch the earth to try to stop this presidency. That to me is an attempt at bypassing the will of the American people. And you're right, Joe, in a, in really when you get down to the brass tacks here, it's a simple case, a simple case of the abuse of power far deeper than anything we ever imagined with Watergate and corruption, in my opinion. Now, here's the simple fact. What the FBI and the DOJ in the Obama administration did was subversion. No, plain and simple. This is 1954 communist stuff. Subversion. They, they sought to subvert the, the, a, an election. And when the person that they didn't want got elected, they sought to subvert his presidency. They have done everything in their power. And don't forget, even though Strzok is testifying tomorrow, the guy who started all of this was John Brennan, the CIA director in cooperation with Clapper. None of this will be fair unless both of them finds themselves in front of a grand jury. Last word, Andy. I think he'll have a lot to say tomorrow behind closed doors, but I still think you do. let the texts speak for themselves. Should they release the transcript?
Congress has the power to make that, the chairman have the power. As soon as they scrub it, to, I assume they're asking him questions behind closed doors because they may get into classified matters, but mm -hmm. I think as soon as they can scrub that, it should be Why out. can't they do what they often do, which is they do some in public and then whatever they need to ask. I hope, go, I hope that's what they are going to do. I think Jim Jordan said he regards this as step one. So I think this is step one and then there'll be a public hearing. I think there will be people that go to jail and I think it's the worst abuse of power we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to get worse based on what people tell me. Thank you. Great work on NRO. Joe, you're always so shy. We really need you to come out of your shell a little bit more. Just a hair. Uh, Joe DeGeneva, thank you. When we come back, all right, Democrats and media freaking out over a Supreme Court decision today. Yes, it upheld President Trump's travel ban. By the way, some of you never Trumpers probably wouldn't have happened if you had your way. Straight ahead. All right, the president scoring a huge victory at the Supreme Court earlier today. The judge's 5-4 decision upheld his travel ban, which places limits on people from, let's see, Iran and Libya, Somalia, Syria, Yemen, waiting to travel to the U.S. And, of course, some in the media, predictably, Democrats predictably lashing out at the court's decision. Wow, it's not the Ninth Circuit for once. It's not their favorite judge shopping court. Didn't work out so well today. Take a look. And so today was a fantastic fulfillment of Osama bin Laden's vision by Donald J. Trump. What Osama bin Laden hoped to provoke was a war of civilization, a war between the West and one billion Muslims. And so what Donald Trump and this Muslim ban signal to the world is that Muslims are not welcome here. If you steal and rip off a Supreme Court justice, then you can try to jam any kind of nasty, racist, ugly policy you can down the throats of the American people. He has his uh, Supreme Court tailor-made to his ugly philosophy. This ruling uh, did not make us any safer, and um, I believe that the court was wrong. It's un-American to do what has been done. This is a moral moment in our country. What the Supreme Court decided today is not just wrong, it is dangerous. It makes us less safe. Joining us now, former Secret Service agent, NRA TV contributor Dan Bongino, conservative columnist, senior fellow for the London Center for Policy Research, Monica Crowley. Good to see you both. Um, I'm just watching. Wasn't Cory Booker the same guy yesterday encouraging people to create uh, uh, big groups of people and follow people into restaurants like Pam Bondi and Sarah Huckabee and Secretary Nielsen? Uh, isn't that the same guy? Well, he's also running for president, which is why you get this kind of grand standing. The President of the United States has two main jobs, Sean. Protect and defend the Constitution and protect and defend the American people. He put this travel ban together after a couple of fits and starts. He finally had a, a, um, a final draft of it and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court validated what he what put in place. Those never and the country people? is safer as a result of what the Commander-in-Chief did. 100 percent. It's not even a close call. And all we're saying is we got to vet you and make sure you, that you uh, don't bring radical views with you, which is a reasonable request in light of 3,000 Americans killed on 9-11 and a series of other attacks. Dan Bongino, there is now the left unhinged. They're now attacking women. You see children. You see the power slipping away, the Mueller investigation crumbling, the economy booming, the president's foreign policy working. And that to the left is now setting them off because the power they want back is slipping away. Sean, Sean, it is, and I'm, I'm really concerned. I know you are too. You know, I spent 12 years in the Secret Service. Sean, I've never, and correct me if I'm wrong, anyone out there, but I never in my 12 years saw a press secretary have to get a Secret Service detail like Sarah Sanders apparently is being assigned now. Her you know, what worries me about the left... Her children were threatened. The president's this, son this is crazy. was... So, what did Peter Fonda say? We'll put him in a cage with pedophiles. And they're talking about Sean, raping Secretary insane. Nielsen. Look at what they did to Pam Bondi. This is now... Somebody's gonna get killed. God forbid, I pray Sean. nobody gets killed on any side of the aisle. Somebody's going to get course. killed here, and something's going to happen because they're pushing, provoking, and seemingly wanting this confrontation. 
Sean, they have no emergency break on their behavior either. Remember, the essence of conservatism is an adherence to God-given rights. There's a moral emergency break on your behavior. There's none of that for liberalism. I'm not talking about Democrats. I'm talking about the Listen, radical I, left. I'm thinking these about are, th these pe I'm very worried about these people. I'm, I'm almost thinking about tweeting out where I'm eating, so maybe they'll leave you know, the women and children alone. They can come after me. I'd feel a little bit better. And, and I'm not they kidding. Sean, they won't leave what? the women and children alone. I mean, that, that's the no, point. They won't. This has been a long Me and long Dan will standing... tweet out where we're going to eat. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'll, I'll you. Come, You're I'll a good tipper, you though, Sean. So it'll be this all right. Has been, this, this is nothing new. Right? <laughs> I'm not but, inviting but, you. What? I'm not invited. No, oh, me and Dan. That is a personal affront. Oh, no. Um, look, this is not something I'm only that inviting you if do. I don't tweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the left has been doing this now for decades. These are Alinsky tactics. This is Cloward and Piven at the border, overwhelming the system. Different. What's different now is the level of intensity and activism on the part of the core left, but also on the part of the media which has created this alliance with the core left. When we've seen this kind of thing happen in the past, there have been elder statesmen or elder stateswomen in the party or something to try to put the brakes like on Like Hillary, Elizabeth Warren, but, but this is now Barack Obama, Barack Obama's Michelle? Part, this is now Barack Obama's party. It is a party of the oh, far oh, left. Barack so of Obama he's said, not going to speak get in their this. face. Remember that? Right. Barack Obama said, we're going to send Mr. Burgess over to Sean Hannity. He's going to tear him up. I'm still waiting. He yeah, hasn't shown up Right. Yet. You bring a knife to the fight, we bring, bring a we gun, bring a gun. And, and so on. Oh, right. but no, no, no. They go low, this, we go high. Well, yeah, mm. well, we know what that really it's is. It's called right? BS. It, yes, we know what that so is. So the, these are the tactics that the left has employed for decades. It's nothing new, but what's new is the level of intensity because they, so, they look at this president as an existential threat. Therefore, he and everybody who is serving his administration and everybody who voted for him must be discredited and, yes, destroyed. It's all part of what I was trying to say in my monologue, Dan. It's every two and four years. Republicans, racist, sexist, misogynist. They're Islamophobic, xenophobic, homophobic. They want dirty air and water. They want to kill children and, and throw your granny over the cliff. It's just, it's just that, except this time, they really are putting... It seems like women in, look at, you know, Mitch McConnell's wife tonight. And by the way, I applaud her. She got in yeah, there grill too. and didn't back down. That's not an easy thing for people to do. It's easy for hey, you to Sean, do. Did you notice, by the way? Did, did you notice the snowflake cowards only started yelling at Elaine Chow really yeah, aggressively after she got in the car? <laughs> yeah, when she got in the car. Total cowards. But you're right. They're Snow, very no, no, aggressive. No, no. They're very cowards. Be wary. That's Listen, right. I, I, mean, I really mean this. And maybe, maybe I'm very old-fashioned. But I don't like the women and children, and I can't recall a time in Obama's administration where something like this happened. You don't leave the kids out of it. Leave the women out of it. You know what? You want to pick a fight? Pick it with me, you, Don Jr., Sebastian Gorka. Pick it with us. At Sean Hannity. Twitter. We'll tell you where we're eating. You can come. Yell at us. Shame, shame, shame. You can chant all you want. Thanks for being with us. Uh, when we come back, Ed Henry, live report on two big stories that will consume Washington tomorrow. All right, big day on Capitol Hill tomorrow. House of Representatives are going to vote on a highly contentious immigration bill. Also, anti-Trump FBI agent Peter Strzok is scheduled to appear before the House Judiciary Committee in a closed-door hearing. We are going to be working hard to bring you that story. Here with a lot more on these stories and more, he's Fox News' chief national correspondent. He didn't really want to hang out at the White House tonight, so he went to the <laughs> studio where he's drinking coffee all night. We thought, I like those shot at the White House. It looks better. All right, Maybe I'm going to start doing will walk that. outside and just say hi like he did to Steve Ducey. He's done that with Steve Ducey. He hasn't done it with me yet, Sean. But i got to tell you, this is a story about immigration and Capitol Hill. So we decided to do it from the studio. We're just a stone's throw from Capitol Hill. But now that you've shamed me, I'll go back to the White House tomorrow night. President Trump, as you noted, scored a major victory on a travel ban today. That gives him vindication on his approach of taking strong measures to protect the nation. And he may now have to take more executive action in the months ahead because it's looking less likely that Republicans here on Capitol Hill are going to pass legislation cracking down on Ill illegal immigration tomorrow. They have a big vote. The president reacted to the Supreme Court ruling by saying the nation needs to be tough in terms of vetting who's coming into the country. But right now, House Republicans are working on a more moderate 
moderate bill that will keep migrant families from being separated at the border, but it's unlikely to include tougher provisions like E-Verify. So it does not appear that enough conservatives are coming on board. As a result, moderate Republican Jeff Denham says tonight he's disappointed that even this watered-down bill is likely to fail in the House tomorrow as the president continues to demand tough measures like funding for the wall watch. We have no tools. We have bad laws. We have the worst immigration laws in the history of the world. Okay? So it's a joke. People can't believe it. Other countries look at us and they say, how is that possible? Meanwhile, as you, note, as you noted, FBI agent Peter Strzok is finally coming to Capitol Hill tomorrow for a closed-door deposition. The president tweeted today that Strzok is a quote-unquote fraud who should instead be questioned live on television. Sources on the Hill telling us tonight Strzok will in fact be grilled in public in the next few weeks, Sean. So the president will get his chance. By the way, there is a breaking story uh, from Capitol Hill tonight with Joe Crowley, a very senior Democrat from New York who has been rumored to be in line to potentially uh, replace Nancy Pelosi if Democrats win the House majority. You've heard all this talk, Sean, about a so-called blue wave. It turns out maybe the blue wave is turning on Democrats. With 82 percent of the vote in in this primary in New York tonight, Joe Crowley is losing by double digits by 15 points. He's facing an unknown 28-year-old Latina woman named Alexandria Octavio Cortez. Joe Crowley has 42 percent of the vote. She hey, has 57 percent. Yeah, the AP just called it. He lost. He lost. So here's the point. Remember what happened with Eric Cantor? Remember Eric Cantor I do, a couple of years ago losing that primary? And all there was all this talk. There's a major civil war in the Republican Party. Big problems. We're hearing now the same. Big problems for President Trump and the Republicans. Democratic wave coming. Guess what? There is a split in the Democratic Party. And tonight it took out one of the most senior House Democrats. And I can tell you, I'm watching social media, Sean. There are a lot of Democrats. Democrats tweeting and on Facebook talking about if Crowley goes down. And as you say, AP has just called it that Nancy Pelosi is going to be in trouble because with incumbents like this starting to fall, I'm defending a lot Nancy. of Democratic I'm, people I, who are arrested. I stand with Nancy and Maxine Waters. I stand with them. I don't, I, they can stay right with me. I'm they just are. bringing you the facts. You can pick who you want. I'm just bringing you the facts. I love trying to get you to give commentary, but I know you're never going to. That's what makes you great. Ed Henry at the White House. When we come back, wait until you see what was captured by a camera crew at the U.S.-Mexico border. That's next, straight ahead. Can we show all these people that are pointing at me? <laughs> Can we put them on camera? All right, uh, there you go. We got a jib. It's moving over. This is a powerful machine. There you go. All right, our video of the day, though, is truly stunning. During an interview yesterday with a border agent near McAllen, Texas, an ABC News crew, ran into a human smuggler. Watch this. So this is one of the areas where almost exclusively the smugglers use it to smuggle unaccompanied children and family units into the U.S. So those migrant families, this is one of the pathways they come through right here? This is the main pathway here in the McCown Station's area of responsibility. Pásale. ¿Cuántos más vienen? Look, there's a smuggler. Espérate ahí, espérate ahí. We have a... Uh, we're just, just got a smugglers.